Yeah, that's it. That works. Yeah, go away, fucking ass. Put my, put my mic on. Yeah, no, I'll just sort this out. Just be quiet, though. Is this the right one? Filters. Yeah, that's the right one. Outside. Sounds a bit quiet as well. Why is it down minus 10 decibels? That should be better. Turn it up, turn it up. Turn it up, yep. I'm turning it up. I've downloaded this default thingy. And it should be better now. Yeah, that's better. Oh, that works out. Um... Yeah, really. That's good. Three lines on the shirt. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming. Football's coming home. It's coming home. That was a very weirdly poor, bad game. The cap. Hey, Robert, you you were you were gaming at that point. You weren't watching you weren't watching the game while you were playing. Hopefully, I can <laughs> Shake with the self-deprecation joke about his own casting. Um, I wasn't listening. I was was downstairs watching PC, but I did open Twitch occasion. What I hear was like Shake going ham, getting excited, being you know very very good. Couldn't I couldn't tell if it was a triple cast, a double cast, or Shake solo cast, something like that. Um, I've got to say this is a, this um this uh, hide, hide that. I can also want to not show the video as well. Also, you just no. This um, OBS overlay is much better than it, uh, the other one is, so that's better, oh, and I don't think it will sort stuff out, no, it's issue, so it should be fine. Well, I'm glad I'm not to hear any, any of that god-awful noise of the alerts, it looks like it's kind of worked. Well, Robot, it, it, the, the funny one, it was they scored in the 95th minute and then the 91st minute. But it's, it's just, it's always quite funny when you have those time overlaps like that. Game, is it game one, player one? Boop. Boop. A boop. It works, but my god, this is gonna be a f absolute faff to sort out all the time. Yeah, I'll put it to the side. Yeah, that, that works out quite nicely. Put it up there. It's coming. Put Two boats just turn up and start shafting my villages. It's coming home. It's coming. Put what's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming home, it's coming! Three lines on the shirts. Oh, I felt so out of the blue earlier. How's the mic? How is it all sounding? I have no idea if any background music on the moment, but. Oh, I see it. I just. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. I don't run a background music in the middle of the game, just in case. News alert. Oh, it's just auto twitch. Hmm. 
<laughs> frontline frontline got the wrong time zone even though i think he suggested the time zones a soldier that's hilarious What's the map pool? Oh, it's it's the same map pool for uh, um, same map pool for each of the get matches in the round of ending on ending on upper Himalayas. Mm. Grand Chaco's no TP. All the others are TPs apart from upper Himalayas. Always find it strange to end on a uh, non TP. Frontline come up with excuses here, saying that he was visiting his brother in Colorado and his PC didn't update to mountain time. America have a mountain time? <laughs> That's That sounds pretty gay, not going to lie. Mountain time. <laughs> I suppose mount, mountain time, mount, not mountain time. And that's something what a lion does with lion's dad. We oh, I kind of ran out while I'm going, are you, wait, are you going to sit down or are you going to sit up? Just pick pick a leg to sit on, and fucking sit on it. Be a good kitty cat. God, I haven't done any bicep curls in years. I haven't done. I haven't actually done any um, gym workouts for a while. I need to get back into it. But you know, you know how sometimes it happens. Just these things never happen. Foot rest now that works. That's okay. Come on, sit down. There you go. Cat's gonna be a bit like confused. Cat, cat's mum is not around today, so it's kind of keeping me company. Oh god, this is gonna this is gonna really hurt my legs. I'll have to throw you off at some point, but I'm sure you won't mind. Yeah. Triple casting has to be like the worst thing in God invented in the world. Well, it must be worse than the plague. Um, let's refresh the page. Is this actually going on? I was watching the... Uh, I was casting last series with uh, Bahonga and I... Um, oh, so Frontline's banned Spain and he's banned Hausa. I don't think there's any... I don't think there's anything... Any consensus which way they do it, but I'm just going to do the Civ ban for player one. Frontline has got um, his house abound. House is banned, and he's banned Soldiers Spain. Oh, it's not even. It, oh, it's in reverse alphabetical order. Oh my god, why would you do that? Ugh. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh my god, I just, I just need to get away so I can see the Discord, I can see the chat, I can see OBS, I can see fucking everything. There's so much shit um, uh, to get on with. Yeah, yeah, you boys go. You, you, you play whenever. I wish I, I wish my cat enjoyed like sitting on a cushion next to the desk. I mean, you've, you've been on my lap for the last like three hours. You've had enough. You've had enough cuddling time. Come back in a bit. We were watching the football game together. It's kind of cute. Right, game number one is going to be a bit of Lakota versus. Why is it in reverse alphabetical order? That's so, that's so backwards. I know, I know you're Australian, Josh, but bloody hell, that is, that is something, right? And the map's gonna be. What is the first one? Guineas, Guineas, Gincidius, Ginaza. I mean, I was, I was sat there downstairs, and I was thinking, like, um, the see if the soldier we'll be playing would be Spain, Mexico, USA, Ottoman, Germany, and then other stuff. <laughs> and it's just no surprise that his Spain is bad, but he then wins with USA, Otto, Mexico. Like, that, that is, like, that's, like, the robot, like, core, especially the Otto, Mexico. Like, you should, be, you should be, if you're playing as robot, you need to have... Oh, hang on a minute. Goal for Georgia. Way get him, boys. God, Georgia's got some uh, really hot female fans. On the flank, on the flank. Oh, so this is Spain as well. Go on, Georgia. Oh, it's a Spain own goal. It's a Spain own goal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I fair play. I mean, it is what it is there. It's my um things work. Because oh, I need to unlock the scores. E yeah, my scoreboard works. That's another thing to have as well as have a scoreboard up. Right, um, ESOC lobby A. <laughs> uh, I think I think we go, we go, we do it, we do it. Dun 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 dun. dun. Game number one is Lakota versus Dutch. I'll see you in there. Yeah? Yeah, that works. Oh, can't sleep on my shorts. That's <laughs> quite cute, actually. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the quarterfinals of the... It is the quarterfinals of the ESOC Spring Should Be Summer Championship, hosted by ESOC. My name's Harrison Cass, and here with a best of seven series between Frontline and Soldier. Game one on Guineas is going to be a Lakota versus Dutch affair. Frontline here playing the Dutch in the colour, friend or foe colour check. I think I've actually, I think my friend and foe colours off here in the colour blue. Soldier, big pro from the old days. 
playing as the Dutch in the colour red. And soldier has been coming back with quite a bit of YouTube content, enjoying the game, which is good to see. Uh, he was playing quite a bit of AOE 4, and I think he now enjoys AOE 3 more than AOE 4. Frontline being solid for a long time. I'm kind of, I'm kind of interested. I don't really know what I'm expecting to see this series, to be very truthful and honest with you guys. I've, I've kind of been out the loop a little bit in terms of the uh, tournament and the competitive scene in general, but I've kind of... It feels like the games these days move on to kind of build order theory and knowing meta and I suppose scouting as well, but a little less these days around the fundamentals. So I'm kind of interested to see how uh, how soldier scouts, how frontline unit micros. I think soldiers micro is very good. Um, I'm just and I'm I'm, I'm just wondering who hoping for Soldier V actually kind of sometimes scouts these DE shenanigans because the meta changes every month. It's a very complex game and God, even I sometimes have no ideas what's going on. First map, nice wide open map, high hunts. Uh, the TP lines not really factoring too much into the games. There are two sets of two, so if you go for a train post and stagecoach, well, it's quite hard to defend and you don't actually get that much return from it. It's quite... It's quite a long time before 600 resources pays off. That's two TPs and the 400 uh, res upgrade. So it's kind of a risky affair. So I'm kind of a bit surprised of the Lakota pick here. I don't think it's a... It might be a blind pick for game one. But even still, as the map goes, it's maybe not the number one map you could do so. Ideas could be Archer Techs and buff your bow riders from the natives for plus 25 and villager damage. Yeah, there's a plus one versus Vils there for Bow which is nasty, that is. Absolutely nasty. Let's mark it down with the TP as well. It has the hunting dogs chopping wood. I think standard theory here at the moment is go for a mid-map war hut. Play age two and really kind of dominate with your four military shipments in the second age. Dutch. They can keep up, they can send eight pikes, they can send three husks, and then they really have nothing to send afterwards. They don't have the military shipments to keep up. They surprise soldier here. Um, he hasn't got uh, the Irish Brigadiers in deck. He hasn't got a extra kind of mercenary unit card in the second age, which I think is really useful to have. Just an extra bit of defense. Does have both 700 wood per food and 700 gold. I really do like that. Have the three husks there. I'm not the biggest fan of three husks, but I can see why three husks is just a better card. You know, the higher eat up you get. Yeah, Bill coming out for the war hut. I'm expecting aggression. I'm expecting, well, all of you at types for um, the code to get in there. The season bows, some clubs to siege the bank, and axe riders to catch the skirm minute men, and that kind of ideas. The, um, oh god, salt. This building placement from Soldier is really awkward. He's just denying so much of his own gold mine to well to himself. Like he's only left himself six vil, six vil gap in onto the mine. And you know, I would I'm saying this is it's a blunder at this point because as soon as, soon as Lakota turn up here with some archers, it denies the whole gold mine. I mean, that's true whether there's buildings here or not. But you know, if axe riders come on the other side. You can easily trap the villas and they just die. This is really, really strange placement here from Soldier. Does go 700 wood card number one, but goes for a barracks straight away, barracks market. I think maybe he could have gone for, if you're doing barracks early, then go for the bank wagon, barracks, market, house, get some maybe like a skirms in queue and try and hide behind a wall segment. I'm sure this is fine, actually. The wood gives extra flexibility for another house, some early pikes, some walls as well. So we'll have to find out how that goes. Let me know if sound issues are different. I'm using a overlay system from ASOC. Not just a... Let you just turn in and see what's up. But I think my voice is okay. I think you can hear game sounds. So that's basically the like, best I can do. Here comes five clubs. TC. Um, Villas Garrison TC straight away. Not a full 10 in there. Working on Club Warriors, so not quite too shocked killing the Club Warriors. Quite annoying for um, Soldier's point of view. But the thing is, we see the axes are being sent and the bows are being trained. So you've already got that three unit composition. And 
Frontline's really working on this uh, house kill. I'm expecting Soldier to have Skirms. He's going for early pikes. So I don't really know how he's going to deal with the um, bows when they turn up. Because, yeah, you, you, you can only have one unit type out of one barracks to start off with. Oh, he's gone for an... Oh, soldiers! Soldiers went for a one pike batch. I was wondering, like, it felt like this batch has taken so long to come out, and there's just units everywhere. One house goes down. It's not, not too bad at the moment, but no colonial militia in deck is. It just feels so awkward. It feels like you're gonna get value with that, and actually, Lakota does want to just shove their units in and constantly idle you, and that's your main kind of defense versus that. Explorer does come out and get some snaring very nice. Scenes working behind. The thing is, Frontline's kind of gone in, but has lost most of his um, early aggression there. I'm sure he's following up with a batch of units and sending some. Yeah, so 5 plus 6 Bowman. 5 plus 7 Bowman. Okay, so he's got, he's got 12 reinforcements. Puts him onto the cute defense mode, but that's just going to whittle down all the other pikes. And I kind of feel that front frontline should be just shoving his cav in there now. Pick off the pikes, find the pikes, pick off the skirms. You're not going to siege down this bank. It's just too much HP. And actually, if you can kill a vill, clean up the army for free. That's the that's the momentum you really want here. We can't let soldier mass. Soldier maybe sending eight pikes, train five skirms at this point. He hasn't got a shipment in queue because he hasn't really been trading too much. And, um, yeah, Skirm's going, but the pikes are going around. Slow Minutemen call really loud. The army's going deep, and the pikes have gone down. Skirm's vulnerable. Vill's getting pulled in from Minutemen. They don't have the Great Coats just yet, so their Vill might go down, actually. One does go down. That shouldn't have gone down. And a second just about gets into the TC. Now Minutemen on their own. Hussars are being called, which is probably, well, I mean, <laughs> a lot of people say that Lakota is, like, the strongest native sieve in the game. Stronger than Inca, Aztec, and Eero. I kind of wants to save, I think Aztec might just eclipse it, but Frontman's put in a convincing argument here why Lakota's actually really good. And um, taking a bank as well and just forcing Soldier, you know, really behind. He's sending gold. What else do you want to send gold in for? He's not He's not going to try and age up at this point. He, he cancelled the Huss. I guess it's because he saw all the pikes going behind. Maybe get a stable somewhere, get hunting out on the side. But since we're now hunting out of his base, this is feeling very dangerous territory here for Lakota, uh, for Dutch. Is this really what you wanted to pick? Game one with the Dutch. This It's like a quick search game. So many really poor matchups for the Dutch have at the moment. It's a great, it might be a good counter pick for some series, but this just felt, kind of felt uninspired to start off the series. Or actually inspired because, you know. It's Soldier 1 with the worst sieve in the game at the moment in 1v1. <laughs> Props to him. Some say it's the worst, some say it's the best. Okay, not the best. Um, some say it's the worst, some say it's not the worst, but quite low down. And I think second bank goes down, that is going to be it, because sometimes in these aggressive games, you kind of price in where you might lose one bank, and you go, okay, as long as I trade off with quite a lot of unit kills and get XP, and I have a plan to rebuild it later on. But at the moment, we're on one bank, and... Like, we sent, we got the 700 gold here, but actually, if Soldier had in the 700 food, well, there may be a, may be a way to age up, but maybe a better way to actually rebuild the banks, considering they cost a lot of food and wood. He already has the wood, and could buy at the market just a little bit. Not really too um, much buying has been utilised in the market. There's the second vill of the game going down. I think it's only two so far. Yeah, Soldier having 24 vills. Actually, a really good count for the dog soldiers coming in. And these guys have multipliers versus all infantry, pikemen and the skirmishers. Minutemen have gone to dissect this. And that back has been torn down by the clubs. That's a very smart play. There will be no more reinforcements. Hussars will come out from the town centre. But will it be enough? Probably not. Seaton Bow is working on the final pikes. And actually, we have three pikemen. Just go in and clean it up. Just go in and just take the trade. So behind. And like, so at this point, Soldier, how is he reinforced? He's probably throwing down the barracks on the side or a stable. But it's just... I think I don't think Soldier's even mentally tapped out at the moment because three Huss eight on the wind. He's gonna try and raid. Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, is, is, has the coast changed? Well, yes. Depends on where you're taking that delta point of like when it's changed from. Because if you change it from start of DE, hugely changed. Change from the last year, 
not not so much, but um, stuff like Seaton's better fire animation now. Club's been a little bit better. Um, some of the eco, some of the crates been different, I think as well. Load of small changes. Huge raid though. I think frontline cars have been a. He's thinking like, ah, oh, the game's pretty much won. Just need to clean up the base. But actually losing, you know, seven, eight vills. That's not really what he wants, but. From France's point of view, he's sending in his fourth military shipment. Soldier just can't keep up. There's nothing for him to keep up. He hasn't sent in his pikemen yet. Um, I, I guess it's because he realizes that pikes get demolished by both the club warriors, the seat and bows, and they're just they're just kind of bad units in this situation. Club pikes having strong base attack. Look at that, eleven. That's three more than a pike. In, in, in relative speaking, that's quite a lot. And Oh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne's been coming in. Very, they look like the dog soldiers. He's already sent in dogs, hasn't he? Fifth military card coming in behind. Um, yeah, he's trying to steal the bank. He, has not, he hasn't got the siege behind anymore. He should be moving out looking for uh, Vils to pick off. The thing is, front line... Okay, he does see 90 in the town centre, but I think he must realise there's more Vils out and about. And yes, Axe Riders are going off. He, oh, he's seen it with one Axe Rider. And poor soldier... There are some bikes coming in, but there is zero answer to the cav raid in the top, and he's going to lose fourville. Pikes coming in, yeah. Go remember, like Lakota's full vill eco and two TP stagecoach and TP bonus as well. So you know the only thing the Dutch has really got going for them is more expensive vills and one bank on one thousand HP remaining. Vills trying to get out to get on the berries. Hunt's tantalizingly too far away. I hate to say it, folks, but uh, soldiers should be thinking about hitting that button on the top right of the screen. Yeah, there was no out there. I had been over for quite a while, actually. But, you know, credit where credit due. Frontline, playing the meta well, playing that build order nicely, pushing in with the units and getting... Good trades with good momentum and good unit control. So it's sometimes that's kind of what you need to do. I was a bit worried earlier. He, he went for the, I think the stagecoach on the 700 wood. I think the build order for Lakota here from his point of view was 700 wood. Um, card one, that helps you get your, your seat and bows out, your club warriors out. But also gives you enough woods to kind of get... Your second train post upgrades to stagecoach, and this becomes your wood income thereafter. Or and you get some good XP on the building TPs, your level one XP, and then the completion to level two gets you a big batch of XP as well. So that's a that's why it drives that military onwards. Just the thing about Age Empires three in general is is something like what Frontline's just done here. It's it's a really simple build order. It's a really simple game plan. It's just, it just, it just looks like Frontline's going out for a casual stroll in the park, and Sotholder. Well, I think it's just a safe matchup win as well, and um, I'm sure he'll bounce back in the next game. Let's have a quick look at the post game. Military unit population, yeah, one production, one production. Maybe hoping could sneak in the semi. It's just never going to work behind that. Couple idols. I think one vill went as one got, vill got produced. And a couple go down. To be fair, good villager production there from Soldier, all things considered. But with no colonial militia in deck. Do you know what the worst thing is? Colonial militias do not kill Seaton Bows with one shot. They're, it's the same with British Longbows as well. They like have like four HP remaining. It's so tilting. It's so awkward. I think the Club Warriors would get one bang though. So that's something to consider. And the Minutemen, of course. Right. Let's get into the next one. Big victory there for Frontline. Oh, can I just not? There we go. And then defeat there for Soldier for game number one. <laughs> oh, 
soldier's thinking, hang on a minute, I want a piece of that action. And he's picked Lakota as well. So it's going to be a Japan versus Lakota affair on the on game number two. They started, so let's hop in and carry on. Eagle with the big raid indeed. Thank you very much for the raid. Saguenay is going to be the map here. Let us hop in, in to the game as we speak. We are back here in the second game between Frontline and Soldier. Score currently 1-0 to Frontline. Convincing win in the first game. But uh, that's all behind us. New game, new starting position, new opportunities. And Frontline picking as the Japanese on Saguenay. Spoiling to the left of the map in the colour blue. Soldier thinking, I want a piece of the action. Has decided to play as the Lakota himself in the colour red. <laughs> Do you know what the interesting thing is? Is... Japan and Dutch, they have very similar sieves early in second age. Like, sit back in base, turtle a little bit, eco buildings. How do you want to play this from Lakota? Well, probably the same, especially with this trading route. And actually, oh, I think I think Lakota's going to be very happy with this really weird trade route. It's not actually a trapezoid shape because it's like these weird little bumps in there. I think that's just map spawn variation. But this trading post, that's on the wrong side of the team. Soldier can take that, and I think Soldier can take this. I think Soldier can contain, control all four trading posts, and that should be the fundamental um, aspect of his plan. Ford Warhut, get the stagecoach as Frontman did last time. Maybe 700 woods, 600 woods ideas. Solidify the trading line, get some units out and defend, and then just outmass, outplay, and smash in. Frontline going for some... Market, I guess, early shrines with explorers. Yet, some shrines have been placed. Two polar bear treasure have been scouted out. I don't really know why the shrine's been placed next to the treasure. I guess it's for permanent line of sight on it. So, in case the soldier wants to move in for a sneaky treasure pickup, front line can come back and contest it. But it's a bandit rifleman here. That's going to do big damage to even explorers as well. Seventy-five food. Soldiers saying yes, please. Let's look at his deck. Land TP. Oh, he has the three TP card. Okay, I take it back. First card. Three trade and post travel. I use the wood on the age up for um, the stagecoach and units because you would have chopped already for the warhut and chopped for your first trade and post as well. Probably. I think that's how it's going to work out. And then from there, it's all on the um, it's all on the unit shipments. Set your TPs to wood. Fishing boats do come in here for a front line. He's going to go for a very um, Tory Gates play style here. He's got the three fishing boats. He also has the five shrine wagons in the second age. And five shrine wagons with the Tory Gates is an insane card. The XP you get from the, those five wagons. The five wagons themselves cost him, I think, 725. 700! 600! One, two, three, four, five, six hundred and twenty-five wood. I'm hungover. Give me a break. Uh, it, it's just a really efficient card, and the XP you get in as well. No, no building time, and you can still build with the explorers. The shrines you are still chopping for, so it's it's one of the you know, it's one of the best cards that Japan has, and it's kind of a reason why we don't see heavenly kami. To Shogo Shrine build orders anymore. It's because it's the meta's moved on. That was deemed too weak by the community, deemed too, too weak by the devs, and so a bit more of a faster paced uh, build order for Age Ones to come in. Uh, this is an absolutely shocking building placement from Soldier. I really want to say that. Either here, behind the tree line, next to the TP. Yeah, next to the TP, really. Um, try, try pathing around this while sieging the building. It's impossible. Use your use your terrain to your advantage. Shove the building right here. You got act, you got a nice little wall. If you put a, the wall out here, units here are protected on three sides. 
We're just in the middle of absolute nowhere. Maybe that's where soldiers are actually from. Just a little farm in the middle of nowhere in the middle state in America. Like, I think I think soldiers from Chicago, but that is actually quite central. Um, no, I can confirm that the game is between Frontline and Soldier. Kevin Robot was before. I didn't watch the series. I know the scoreline, but I'm not going to say in case you want to watch it back. That five shrine wagon is for the second time here for Japan, or is it just the first? Okay, it's just a. Have I been sleeping? <laughs> Okay, no, he's he'd been up and that's yeah, first shipment in. Okay, his first actual shipment is gonna be uh Yumi's. Three on this hunt, two on this hunt. Second war hunt comes in from soldiers. He's got he's gone for the seven hundred woods. No. How's he affording all this? I guess he's gonna try and do the TP next card, but this is really, I kind of feel like it's like relatively slow. He's got two war hut, but he's not able to produce out of them because he's not sending the right cards. Nice pickup though. Yeah, three TPs. That should be card one. You should, I reckon the, all these TPs should be done, down already. The war hut on the trading post. And you know, it'd be quite hard for Japan to siege the building straight away. And then because you've had your three TPs down as card one... If you had them already, get an XP, you send the next cards out. So he actually sent seven cl seven Bowman, card number one. Well, I have no idea. What is this build order here from Soldier? Can anybody else explain to me this, the idea of this build order? Building two war huts, but actually sending in seven bows first instead of wood or TP. Sending TPs after getting a really delayed... Trading posts, so his TP curves behind. Defensive buildings behind his eco, not really defending it. Spanky coming to soldiers' defense. I love you, Spanky. I know you love me as well, but I don't see it. I just don't see this at the moment. It's probably going to work out still fine for Soldier as the game goes on because these season bows are incredible versus Ashes and. Um, because at the moment it's just a pure infantry fight. It's going to work out quite nicely here from Soldier. That train post has gone up because of the wagon being built. Builds it nice and fast. Axe Rider's coming behind. Now we're going to see the um, XP fly in. Oh my. We, we don't have two dogs in deck. We don't have... We've only got the three Unix cards in the second age. So we'd have to try and mass on 700 gold. That's hunting. Don't think I don't think you really need European waves and thirteen bison all in the same deck. You, you you kind of have to rely, but these maps are good maps these days for your hunt, and you should be with current Lakota play style out on the map dictating. And like we got always hunt, we have controlled because we're out on the map. Drop down a little TP on the hunt, get the bonus, and then you know happy days. Everything's behind. As he is still not getting stagecoach. This is this is the wood encumber he needs. Kaleli, I I, re I reckon try again um, three train posts card number one and then defend with the forward war hut you build. I think that should be just you should just have enough time for that. That's my guess. I don't actually play Lakota. I don't play many sieves. You, you can't see it. Samurai is a really interesting play here from frontline. Very expensive. Does he actually have samurai cards in deck to kind of back this up behind? He, no, he doesn't. Yumi, Ashi, it's like the samurai is just extra flavor. Um, it's training more, he's trained still more samurai, more naggy. Like, frontline is just going to get a massive unit and right click soldier's base. The problem is for frontline is that soldier has a couple cav, but a full army of, well, bowmen. And that's actually what he wants versus Yumi, versus Ashi, versus samurais. Um, but the you know speed of Samurai and Ashi, they should be able to get in there. Season bows, good kiting animation these days. 4.95 speed underneath the Explorer. Get that Explorer nearby. You want that speed boost. It's critical if you're trying to 
not get caught out by this. As Nagy's nearby as well. Has Soldier got any clubs coming? As he, oh, he does have the clubs from the shipment. That's what I quite nicely. Frontline still holding quite a decent score advantage, and moving on to the, one of the train lines, getting that and siege down. There's a lot of shrine potential on the top side of the map and near the coast of his base. You, you just see that actually, not feeling comfortable taking his army or trying to get some economy outside of his base away from where his army is. He can't defend everything. His army's nearby his forward exposed buildings. They're gathering resources. Soldier just unable to really push in. This advantage, 700 wood now coming in behind. He must get stagecoach on this wood and stop chopping uh, for wood with your villagers. Get them on hunted. He is moving on to hunts to kind of make the most of the wood crates coming in. That's good to see. And we should see an explosion of units here from Soldier. But is it? will it be in time? It should be. But what would he go for? He probably wants to see some clubs to help siege the shrines. You do have enough bows. Actually, you want the clubs to body block, even if it's versus the samurai. Because as soon as like Seton Bowman's going to combat, melee combat that is, then they're starting to fall off. Also, where's the fire pit? Where's the fire pit? You're about to take a big fight. Where's the fire pit? Where's the war dance? Come on. These are the... These are the things I'm, I'm looking for, and you know, if you have a full fire pit, that's 25% attack on all your units, and in a crucial situation like this, you might not have the eco to get a new batch behind in all the time to get that. Maggies go forward. They massive damage on the clubs. The clubs killing Japan Cavs. Samurais and Ashes have gotten close, but there's just not really enough Maggies behind us to follow us up onto the seats and bows. Bones are still doing some good damage. Some auto siege and targeting actually needs to get the explorers in there to really distract the fire. Samurai getting some good catches, but this is looking to be a good fight here from Soldier. And probably it's going to be a bit of a cleanup. Can frontline bounce? Oh, Nagis and the Daimyo! Soldier! His, he was. He's sending bisons! Soldier is sending bisons! Why is he sending in bisons? This is like RE meta. Sent. Oh, he should. He should. He should have sent the bisons forward. A wall you can't kill. Hide behind the. Oh, that'd be so memey. That would have been so good. That would have been so good. <laughs> the club war has been hit by the bisons. Why send the bisons? <laughs> Why have you got a deck with only three units in H two? When your whole fit plan is to stay in H2 and mass units. I love how the uh, Shinobi no Monos, their siege animation is a... Sh puts a grenade on the end of an arrow and shoot it from a... Um, well, shoot it from your arrow, uh, from your bow, shall I say. It's quite meme -y. Problem is, Soldier hasn't got Stagecoach, he hasn't got any more wood crates, hasn't got a good way to get his wood income. He's got a lot of food now, great. And he has this situation where he's thinking of like, oh, maybe I should, um... Oh, this is some market trade and Soldier's panicked. Yeah. Also, look at this, it's time for the other shrines to get out there and maybe... Was that a front line sending in five shrines second time? Yes, he has, and managed to get out. More shines on the map nicely onto it as well. Needs to get in. Um, cherries soon. Coin crates to come in. Might actually soon have enough resources to age. I actually wouldn't put it past Frontline to siege this trading post and then kind of like, well, walk back to base. He's, yeah, I think he is. He could be trained like double Nagi. Nagi from Stable, Nagi from Daimyo, but he's not. He's just looking to age behind this. Sends in the Cherry Orchard, so he's kind of double vulnerable by sending in a card which gives you no initial tempo and the aging behind. But, yeah, Soldier's got no middle map presence. That's the sitting base of this one. Yeah, I feel I feel you, Angus. This is uh, 
it's a slow death waiting to happen. And to be fair, I'm fully on board with this with play from Frontline, just moving back to the army, aging up, getting your techs in, play it nice and steady, get your get the rest of your market techs in, come on, still servants. And yeah, just just kind of secure your um substantial lead at this point, nearly double score. I'm sure once the age up from Frontline comes in, Soldier will be clicking that button. Because at this point, Soldier is hoping that Frontline walks into the base, the TC, the Warhut, and kind of gets surrounded and cleaned. But unfortunately, it's not quite going to happen. Absolute spanky. If you remember the last game with Frontline, part of the build was getting the stagecoach to get the wood income. And this this soldier had every TP under his control. If, this, if, if there was a map to do it, this was the map to do it. And... Um, Frontline's just trained units now, so he's kind of committing to an H3 play, which makes sense. What would his first card be? I'd like it to be 5 Nagi as card one, actually. I don't think Flaming Arrows is really what you want here. It's a good card, and, you know, help you with the buildings, but actually, there's not there's not that many clubs here for a soldier. Actually, once you have enough infantry as well, the clubs come forward, they'll get mowed down, and just a, a mass of Nagis. It's like Yumi Arch, Disciplined Ashy first, Disciplined Nagi coming in. And yeah, you've got quite a lot of upgrades to tech, but this is all fine for Frontline. There is just no, there's just no need. There is just no need for him to do this, and he's wait, waiting. Yeah, Zerimbi, I'm kind of also tempted to hit the fast-forward button. I think I'm like behind the players by maybe two two minutes, three minutes. I think when I got, got into the game, that is. Yes, the, the, the Flaming Arrow's main role is kind of anti-artillery warfare, a bit of siege. You know, they are still good. Like, if, if, if a Flaming Arrow hits a, an infantry unit, most likely that infantry unit's going to die and go flying. So, it's not like getting the massive splash that sometimes Falconets get ahead. Nagi HP, that card used to be HP, 30% HP for Nagi Nauters, and used to be the most underrated card in the game because of how much HP and range resist that Nagi Nauters have in general. A soldier dancing for the war, um, war chief, just the HP there. Is he going on to, he's going war dance now. Big doggies, age two doggies though. Unfortunately, the age two dogs are just not the level they they need to be. Good though, the war club's pushing down the uh, Naginatas on the front line. Boraz will come behind. I think there's a, actually a decent probability that Soldier will win the fight. Maybe the uh, Sea and Boraz are actually on the, the Ashes, and the um, Boraz are taking down the Nagis, but they're still in the line of fire. The disciplined Jimmies, and they're. You know, that's, they're doing a lot of damage here. 29 attack from the Yumi Archers. That's veteran Japan concert and Wanda as well. Unfortunately, though, all the, the cavalry from Lakota going down. No answer directly to the Flaming Arrows at this point. That button has been clicked. And uh, second game goes to Frontline in this best of seven series. Well played. Unfortunately, the laser bisons of Canada didn't come in. It was just the, uh, it was just the Great Plains bisons just ch chilling out. I think when you have a deck with a three TP card as well, that's kind of like one of your special cards, and you just don't have space in the deck for other special cards, including the new ways and the thirteen bisons. I see it. I see the reason why. This to me looks like more of a um, kind of a an age three play style deck and we didn't quite get to there to make use of those other cards frontline well he went samurais yeah, he went sam he made use of many unit types there from japan pushed out took a good fight kind of thought that lakota had a better fight at that part at that point
Yeah, it was at this point it was it was getting a bit dodgy, and then at this point there's still um yeah five five naggies, Daimyo running across, and maybe more reinforcements. But it was getting pretty close, and then it was just the um, Bowman's remaining, and then they went they got picked off, and so the military buildings gave space for the front line to age, secure his eco with the cherry orchards, and play on from there. Clay reckons the gap at the end was 6k. I'm going to, I'm going to take the point of the fight. That's 20... Yeah, 20k at 17. Yeah, 3k, 3k at 17. And um, 5, 5k at the end. So not, not quite the 6k there, clearly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I'm not too sure you can count the Vils high and the TC at the end as part of your equation for the uh, res difference. But it, it does make sense. It's, it's not an invalid argument. Just saying, I don't think you, you probably consciously thought about. First train post for Lakota was at five minutes and thirty. I think this, I think this is the main issue: is is just not having those shipments ready to go, spam them out, and just didn't have. We we had a huge mass for a long time actually from soldier and actually units which had a very strong matchup of what Japan had on the field. I think once the more well-rounded competitions came out, then it started to fall apart a little bit. Well. GG's, GG's, GG's. A victory there for Mr. Frontline and Mr. Soldier going down in defeat. We'll look into the next game. British commandement. I'm already worried about this matchup here for Soldier. I'm not going to lie. People say China's so OP, but oh, this is not what he wants to see right now. You know what? I, I've, I've always said this about Soldier. It's, this is going to sound so... Um, maybe a bit a bit harsh from me. Soldier has never, he's never been a build order enjoyer. He's never gone, right, I'm playing this Civ, and this is the build order I'm going to do. I'm going to execute this theory. I'm going to play, play as Germany. Turn to the Germany versus Ivro handbook. And then, um, oh, I should go for this card order because of these reasons. Uh, it, it's, Soldier kind of gets into a game, gets into the game, goes, lick the finger, oh, what should I send now, what should I do? And Soldier loves to go late game and outplay macro and that kind of thing, but it's not. You won't you won't see Soldier going for a Baja California oh no Rio Grande revolt with with Mexico because it's not on him to kind of price out the entire build order start to finish. It's just not his way of playing. He is he is the um the game enjoyer, not the build order enjoyer. Yeah, makes sense. Well, should we get go? Should we get going? Yeah, <laughs> I've just seen the map. What on earth is Soldier doing? What? What? It's Grand Chaco. It's a zero TP map, and in we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the third game between Soldier and Frontline. Frontline is currently 2-0 up. Game number three, one Grand Chaco. It's going to be the British versus the Chinese. Frontline spoils the north of the map in the colour blue as the Brits. Soldier, south, east, in the colour red as the Chinese. Map has livestock. There's two ponds. Each pond has two llamas. And the uh, disciple going to the west pond. Explorer going to the east pond. Very, very useful. It actually... Going for the fast exploring scout to get to the eastern pond as well, or the western pond. Very nicely played. But there's no trading post here. It's a high hunt map. I'm I'm struggling to see the the, the theory of going China here, and I kind of half expecting Soldier to do H2 play, but I'm also interested in Soldier's point of view because I don't think Soldier is a current China. Meta enjoyer, so I'm expecting 
a second village. I'm expecting Northern Refugees card one. I don't think he will be going for um, tea leaves. Yeah, Land CM has no tea leaves if he wants to go for that. Um, Lands does, so I don't really know what the difference between Land CM and when. Yeah, I think mean, it's a uh, decision of what card he wants, but these days, the. the... Dude, what? No, 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 it's hard to We're like, run around the pond. That's where the yaks are spawning. Do you want yaks? You're China. You want the yaks. Llamas. They're the same thing as yaks in terms of uh, stats. But you want the livestock. You, you know the map. You've been playing this map for years. Get the livestock. He's going for the livestock. Yes, yeah, soldier. Get the livestock. He's seen when the brick explorers. He's like, yes. These are free. He's got them. Praise be. Praise be. I kind of, I kind of felt like that was like the first thing you'd be doing in a tournament game on a map you prepared for. Especially if your sieve enjoys the livestock. I think Soldier gets that. That's a good. That's a good contestion. Oh, he's got it. Fanlight's got it. What? No way. And yeah. Uh, soldiers gone for um, Northern Refugees card one, which you know, is actually it's still a good card. Uh, TD's matters, I think, a little bit more flexible. But I think the theory behind Northern Refugees, it's probably a better card if you're not really getting pushed, or you have a, a you either fully commit to age two, or you get to age three without any um, harassment. But outside that, it starts to fall apart just a little bit. Saves the Llama. Gets Explorer Snare as well. And Brick Explorer is very far from base. He has to kind of fight this. He has... What was he got? Has Frontline got Counter Snare? Oh, he's still Snared. Nice. Uh, Porcelain Tower comes down here from Soldier. I'm not a bit... I understand that he's probably going... Uh, maybe Porcelain Tower, Wood, and Spam... Like units in H2, but I, I think Paulson Tower only makes sense if you're doing the Chinese FI, which I, I hope he's not doing the Chinese. I gotta say, this Chinese FI deck is also really bad. <laughs> so he's got no Beiang army if you want to do like a Beiang pivot to H4, but I think going consulate pivot or was it intervention pivot is really nice actually for the you know age up to the fourth age with your guard red coats ready to go, but. You've got 15 Keshik, 16 Step, and 8 Meteor. You've got no Skirmisher unit type in the 4th Age. You've got no Chukanu or the Arquebusiers. You haven't got all Dynasty reforms for late game if you're trying to go Step Keshik. You've got two Mercenaries. I've not been a fan of two Mercenaries because you just don't have the space for your 7 Mortars and your Beiyang Army, which is I think is a fantastic card. And it's... I just... I feel... I don't know what to expect here from Soldier's gameplay for this game. I'm really interested because, you know, as a China player, but also I just, on paper, is not quite making sense. Oh, so, oh God, Soldier's at... Right. I've played this matchup a few times. I th I think China's best way is to take this age two out of micro Brit, and yeah, you have you have your your shipments, and you can age up later on actually, but in the FF here, he's he's got no Russian blockhouse. Like he has to send in seven hundred woods to get the consulate, to get the barracks, to get another house. Maybe a market if you're lucky, and that's it. That's your shipment. But you need you fundamentally need your shipments. You fundamentally need to send in that shipment to get the wood to actually build the buildings and pray you're not going to get right clicks. Like standard FF pre. -t oh, this is going to die to muscus. At least, at least he's going to age up with skirms to the third age. If he goes, if he goes to a palace, and it it works out for an FI, but again, like. I would I would never FI in current meta without a Russian consulate, 
opening because Blockhouse pivots to Brit Consulate and then you can just send in intervention for the Musks. You don't need the housing population, so let's say we lose all the villages, it's not the end of the world. Here, oh, he's having to eat some um, llama, a little pre just to get the um, food in. What's the age going to be? He, oh, he needs, he does need skirms. He's got a summer palace. Push would say the blockhouse is terrible if you're not playing age two. I disagree, my friend. I disagree because the blockhouse helps you not die to musk hus timings. I see a musk. I see a hus timing. We're going summer palace with three vills. There's no skirms on the age up. We're not sending pivot pikes. What's the plan? What is the plan, soldier? You can't lose your villages. You, you, you physically cannot lose your villages. Otherwise, it's game over. What is the plan? Oh, the explorer is hanging. That's, that's so worth getting that picked up if you can. Look at the musks coming in here from the front line. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not really focusing on the build too much. Yes, he's got houses, markets and stuff. Ford Barracks, he sent in some wood, coin and musks. Um, but the village is going down. Oh, no. Soldiers popped. So, like, soldier won't just ascend a normal she has to send an intervention and wait for the Brit constant to come in behind. There's a, uh, I, it, all, it always seems a child looks so, so not with it sometimes in tournament gameplay. I don't, but, but as soon as you go onto like quick search, you see some of these like newer Chinese players just pull off like flawless Chinese FIs and you go, wow, China, China looks amazing. Once this village goes down, it is game over, unfortunately, F like full, full game over. Yeah, villagers have to run to try and get a village out. Soldiers' rights to leave the wanders, leave, and they go for the village. Yeah, it's, it's, if you if you're friends with him, it, you, you yeah you get that as well. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd like to try and dress this up as oh yeah, soldiers an intervention, make some units, time this and that, but like. I, I have no I have no sense of this is going to work out for Soldier in the short, the middle, the long run. I doubt you'd even see um, non tea leaves opening in um, Julian Kay's uh, guidebook. I haven't quite yet seen any upgrades here from Frontline, but I kind of, I think just some, a third production facility and maybe seven six hundred gold behind would be just even better. Just spam it, and yeah, you just can't you can't take you can't take a one card fight in a. Three, you have to wait for two cards to push and then call Minutemen. But he's already gone through the Minutemen. And his cards have come out from the village. TC going down before they even turn up. Because there's no way we're massing up a Chinese death ball without training any units and without stacking shipments and like grouping your units together. TC goes down.
<laughs> Llamas being pulled back to friendly territory. <laughs> it's funny because one hus one hus still beats one veteran meteor hammer because um you know these these aren't at two hundred res price and they're they you know they function a little bit different to Hussar. Um, games called. I'm not gonna lie, folks. That was that was disappointing. That's. I don't want. I don't like seeing um, FF without TD's build. You just die to muscus. I keep always say this. You just die to muscus. And as soon as the villages started going down, we were in trouble. Then, absolutely in trouble. You need that wood to rebuild them. Couldn't get racks down, and we just couldn't gab um, gab or. Because all, all the musk and husk were just keeping the villas in the um, situation. Oh, do we not have any in-game sound? Oh, why have you not... Can, can you not hear? Oh, why hasn't nobody told me? Is this something I can fix? Um, oh, for some reason... Oh. Apparently, apparently there isn't an audio channel for game sounds. Why... I don't see. I, I, nobody's nobody's put in the cast a channel or tagged me. If you t if you tagged me, I can see it. Oh, that's really. Why is there no audio channel for this? This is terrible. Uh, right. I need to I need to sort that out then. Sorry about that. I've been trying this new um, eSock overlay, but I just just thought it would have a desktop sound in there. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> Um, this. Yeah, you're right. There isn't any sound. Why is there not any sound? Um, I don't actually know how to fix it because it's a it's a display it's a display capture. Properties, capture method, it's that, no, there you go. Uh, so, so sorry about that, guys. I, I didn't realise. Yeah, that's, that's that's really made this um cast really poor, isn't it? Yeah, I'd get I'd get very tilted if I was watching a cast with no sound. Uh, my apologies, everybody. Yeah, you you can <laughs> you can I can I can quite literally say you can blame the ESOC overlay for that one because you know me. I usually always have that stuff nailed down. I'll write that. I'll write um, a thing to uh, Josh because it just didn't ex it just didn't exist in the um, setup config. I have to start all over again. Maybe. Right back to the home screen. Right. Uh, let's get the um, game three results. There we did see a win. A victory for Frontline and another defeat for Soldier. Next game is going to be a German Mirror for game number four. Ho hooray! We do like German Mirrors. Oh. And go into the fourth game. Only found out after game three, lol. <clears throat> yep, 
I've uh, let the dev know that that is sorting out. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Let me know if the balance is off. I can change it if needs be. Right, let's go into game number four. We're on Dakota. Let's do it. I need like a, I need like a five monitors. I only got two. I want more. I want maybe like a bigger monitor to to see everything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here in the fourth game on Dakota. We have got ourselves a German mirror, which I'm always excited to see. I think it's one of the fan favorites of matchups. This game provides always explosive, always dynamic. Huss flying everywhere, Dops flying everywhere. This should be a great one. Both players ger playing German, as we know. Frontline spawning down to the southeast in the color blue. Soldier spawning to the northwest in the color red. This is match point for Frontline. So far, he's up 3 0 and has comprehensively outplayed Soldier so far this series. And I, I have a feeling that this game, though, is going to be. Right up Soldier's Alley. He loves um, Nilla matchups. He loves mirror matchups because that's when just like the micro gets to shine. This is a really micro intensive matchup as well, especially when you're trying to run around with very high damage dealing units like the Doppelsonder, like the Ulan as well. So big, big hopes for Soldiers to bring this one back. But so far, as a series, it hasn't quite been uh, at the level that we've hoped it would be. At this point, soldiers are going to go for some weird Germany mercenary build. Mercs are not a bad idea, actually. Um, the only problem is this matchup, or this map, is really kind of poor on mines. You've got two in base, which is very generous, but your next two are kind of quite far out. There's a central 5k, and realistically, whoever controls the 5k gold mines is going to be taking the upper hand in this game as it, if it goes on much later. We do see frontline with a... Palantine card in deck has a five dop and dop combat card in the third age. We're missing out eight Ulan and one thousand coin, but I don't think I think this is a nice little idea here for him frontline. Treasure contention. Actually, it's gonna be a treasure contention. Oh, try to go for the sneaky shot. I think. Front oh soldier soldier got it what no way I swear frontline was higher up but maybe maybe as I looked from uh, soldier's point of view to frontline's point of view you know, time had moved on at that point wow big steal soldier absolutely loving life he's he's on the back he's he's on the return Let's look at uh, Soldier's point of view as well, actually. Let's have a look. Soldier. He's. Um, oh, he's gone for the Bavarian Chevaliers. I, I, I actually have never used the card, but I know it's a decent card, but he's not, he's not going for war wagons at all. And he doesn't have any upgrade cards in the second age, which. I'm surprised Soldier does not even have Cav HP in age 2. I think. He does have some 9 dots, age 4, 12 skirm. Lipnaza cavalry as well. That's a um, interesting card. That's Ulan cav combat, but only for the Ulans. If, will we get there though? That's like that's one of those cards he just sends once he run out of all the other cards in the fourth age. Yeah. Also has 5 dots, no 8 Ulans. This is interesting, and I think for some reason this feels like this is Soldier's main age. Like Germany deck instead of like a specific anti Germany or mirror matchup deck, so it's quite interesting how he has the five dots there instead of eight Ulans, which you can't in most situations you can't really go into a game without the eight Ulan card, it's just too good. Too good, yeah. I think on paper, like the um Bavarian Chevaliers actually are just pretty, they, they seem pretty sounds on paper. I just haven't quite worked it out. There's always a cat case that like war wagons just grossly over kill Ulans, but with the 500 HP and the, I think it's the 20% melee resistance, uh, 
um, it might be 30 actually, they tank so much Olan fire, like they, they are the true anti Olans. they, they're happy just to, to, to even, they're happy to get caught by them, but like, you know, French goons, Dutch routers, they'll get cut down very quickly, but War Wagons just stand there, so, and the, the thing is, in, in a matchup like this, a Dragoon card will be a sense, it, it kills Cav, and it, Allows you to engage hand infantry from a distance. There's no reason to not send it. So we will be seeing that card later on. Frontline going for a forward barracks. Soldier going for the, the the TP in the middle instead of the TP on the side. I don't know why players would go for TP in the middle instead of when you know more defensive. It takes time to go here and siege it down. It's it's out of the way. This is right in the path. This is begging, begging to be sieged. Soldier still an early steel traps here from Soldier. Um, side, there's a side build. There's a side, but there's a side barracks. He's doing side dops. <laughs> and frontline's doing front dops. Also going for steel traps early. Both place of mines. This is gonna be quite funny. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, it's great. I, fundamentally, though, we have a sh we have a military building in the middle of the map, which can reinforce all parts of the map pretty quickly. Is the kind of the fundamental like what's going to happen? Your land's going to go for the settler wagon. Oh, I'm going to kill the settler wagon. Oh, trying for the quick war doesn't need it, but if anything, the land's coming, yeah. scaring the land's away. That actually, you know, could have tried to bait in and kill the. Uh, lands with the dot pop, but up to be. Both players only getting four dots out for batch number one. This hurl in here from frontline, very nice, very good. And he's he's he knows it as well. He's just going to maximise the amount of animals he kills and if he's town centre at this point, very good. <laughs> so. Some weird house placement and like the center wagon on this side, walking all around the tree just to get that one done. Orlans do manage to get away from it, and both players are exchanging uh, training posts. We might see Church being thrown down in base of both players. Yep, Cemetery Wood's just turned up, so I think both players are doing three set of wagons, Cemetery Wood, and then maybe age up on the Cemetery Gold. More dops coming up behind. Frontline. He's going dops as well, actually, but it's a, more of a delayed double batch. Really delayed doppel batch actually. Will he have enough resources to get a full batch? He should do. This is some good house placement. I, I this is some this that is really good. That's a really good house placement there from frontline. I will say that. Needs a fifth. Needs a fifth. He gets it. He gets the fifth. It's nine versus eight dops if the fight happens. Frontline going crossbows. Soldier going crossbows as well. He sees it. Well, that's coming for the raid. TC fire will push away. Do we have our great coats yet? We do not have our great coats yet. Does Soldier has great coats? He does not. No, Santa Wagon! The Santa Wagon! Oh, it goes in. Oh, if he lost, if he lost the Santa Wagon, to in a German mirror because he didn't have his great coat. He, yeah, yeah. You get your great coats now. Yeah, very nice. But you needed them earlier. I always feel like I say that line every time. Like people, like people nearly lose a bill or lose a film and go, oh, I did not have a bill HP. I should get my bill HP. Dop catch, dop catch, and here's the crossbows. Are the crossbows here from frontline on the wrong side of the map? This is a cleanup. This is it. This could be game. That is so huge. And went, he went for the market instead, and you got more than bargain for. And uh, you, the thing is, you always know Minutemen are going to pop. You always know, but the Minutemen are going to pop. And you got no answer. You no answer versus the Minutemen. And backdoor dops pushing in, and. Soldier's got himself a commanding lead at this point. It's really hard to get back in a situation. What Frontline needs to do is really micro down those um, 1 HP Minutemen and call his own Minutemen, hopefully. That's like his only real way. Oh, he's coming in. There's another land here as well. Okay, Ulan's taking the fight on the side. Actually, there's a lot of local... Oh! Crossbow's getting caught like in melee there by the adopts. I think... I'm kind of surprised that... 
Frontline just didn't take the opportunity he had because he had the Dops engaging with the other Dops. They could have body blocked him and actually freeze the crossbows to fire from range. Olan's coming to meet and greet. And um, yeah, good fight there actually overall from Soldier. Good micro. With some Dops do catch those up raining crossbows, which is nice to see. Minutemen do come out now. Minutemen could have been out early though. They could be way out earlier. Out comes uh, some Olan's with the gold. And. Um, Frontline is more production, otherwise he could try to age and go war wagons, but he's just still spends it on the um he's still spending the back the back's still up, so he's still spends it on it. A lot a lot of dops can go down to the TC fire here still. It's not I mean actually reinforcements here from soldiers not a thing, but he's aging. He should be Oh, he's, he's grossly Miss Micro. Miss Macro, pardon me. Yeah, he used to pull everybody on to... Uh, he's, and three, and sending three dops. He's just wanting to stay age two here and get this done. But, see, like, Frontline has to make units. He's holding on. He has to make units. He can't just not make units here. Soldiers doesn't need to. He, just, he could age up for War Wagon Scum. Or his, um, or his Bavaria buddies. Like, Soldier at this point should be thinking, I've lost position. He's, he's still he's going for it, though. I guess he could still... He could just cancel... Yeah, cancel the shipment. Cancel that unit. Age! How many dops do we have here from Soldier? He's, he's got 12 dops. He's, got, he's still got more dops than the other. He's still look. Oh, he just... He, he's... Oh, good catch there from frontline. I think what Soldier's thinking, if he, if he backs off the army, he has to back off the food as well. But he had enough food to age. Um, and that's, that could have been an age 3 shipment. Soldier triggering, accidentally taking on the Black Bear, which kind of snares his army. I don't mean it snares it, but it distracts. And frontline moves in. So many kills for these uh, Dops, actually. Really effective. Kill death ratio. And that play from frontline has brought him back into the game. Both players looking to age. Frontline, frontline didn't send the three dops. He was sending them. Soldier currently four, five cards. Age two sent. No cards ready to go. Frontline four cards sent. He has a card ready to go. This is the difference. This is such a huge difference in the in the board position of the game at the moment. You don't sometimes it's just best to save the card, even if it is. Well, it's only three dops as well. Like, what is the extra three dops doing? Yulan's coming for a nice cheeky raid, but uh, good position of the Dops. That's a snare. That's a smash. And that's going down. Um, yeah, but Frontline's moved on to his third coin mine. And this, this is the point now where Soldier will soon too be moving on to the third coin mine. Yes, he has moved out, actually. He's got quite a bit of wood, though. What's Soldier looking to get? He's just going straight into war wagons. He's chopping a lot. He's actually chopping a lot of wood because he needs to re... Oh, he has got a barracks. Why does he need 350 wood? I guess he just wants to get some houses down. He will, he will grow into that pop space and maybe vet dots. Frontline's, frontline's, well, I'd say he was trying for vet dots, but I think actually he's just going to go for War Wagon and Skirm at this point. He, he's well, he's sending his shipment here on War Wagon instead of 1,000 wood, which yeah, you know, I think is very, I think it's a good choice. You know, having this early push of War Wagons, frontline. It has the potential to get so much value. Oh, it actually has a trading post down. Looking for 12 bisons. Yeah, I think he's looking for 12 bisons. He, he just does not want to be anywhere further out the base than he has to. And you know, I think it's going to be a good good card and tech for him to tech there. I was kind of thinking he might be in the Cheyenne for Cav Speed and Cav HP. Or something like that. Um, but no, it's just really the, the uh, hunt. What is nearby? I think as soon as those Ulans, as soon as those Ulans connect with those vills on the gold mine, soldiers bring them back. He's bringing them back. He's bringing lots of vills back, actually. Oh, check the gold mine. If he clicks the gold mine, he knows there's vills nearby. You just see the TP makes sense. 
Soldier Manager just gets in eight skirms there. I think we'll see the skirms and ball back off a little bit. But it's also eight skirms for frontline. It's essentially, Soldier went for three dots, two Ulan. And uh, frontlines exchange it with three Ulans, three war wagons. So has a bit more momentum in this second. How is frontline ahead? Like, frontline is ahead of his position. I think that is because that extra card really helping him there. And that momentum. The thing is, the dops, like, once the dops go down, potentially Ulans come out to play. You can kind of see how everyone's just kind of just spamming war wagons at this point because this is the safest unit, especially when you know there are doppel sunders on the field. High HP, 20% melee resist, and Dops have to close in. But the other one's just running away from the the uh, Dops. They just want to kill the war wagons. Just just get the um, those damage dealers down as much as possible. Skirm's just focusing down. Oh, overall, that's a good fight there for frontline, and it's just 12 war wagons here for frontline versus soldier. Just the four war wagons. He does have more, but he's out of gold ish. No, he's not out of gold. He's just got a thousand food. He's trying for Bavarian uh, Chevaliers, but he hasn't got the cards, he hasn't got the XPs, and the fight's coming in, he's just getting caught, he's getting caught, the, as soon as the Ulans are snaring the Skirms, it's night-night, the Ulans can't move in to save, and all the Skirms have gone down, and the Warwagons are still standing, and there's still eight Skirms from Frontline, unchallenged, those Ulans are just not, they can't dive in, they physically cannot dive in at the moment, they can now actually, but again, that's a pretty good engagement there from Frontline's point of view. He's now sitting seven skirm behind, getting more war wagons trained. Also, really high on the food count at the moment. Needs to reprioritize uh, re his economy. I think he should be trying to aim and lock down that middle gold mine. He has the army here to, to do it, and he's sending skirms. He's got loads of ills on hunt. Loads on the hunt. Outpost coming down for Germany on oh for a soldier on the western side and eastern side. Um, most of the armies there, so you don't necessarily need to force a fight with an outpost. Je soldier will be sent. I swear, the soldier wanted to send in that uh, chevalier card by that point, but need the more skirms to challenge while the war wagon mass. Oh, down raid on the eastern side. Where's he going? He's oh he's checking the mines. He's checking the mines. He just ran past some uh, hunters. This has been a great game, this has. Soldier up against it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what would be amazing. If any player can manage to squeeze in a Pandors shipment, a Jaeger shipment. We do see um, Frontline going for a Cav Combat shipment. That's going to work out really nice. Might have enough wood behind to think about Arsenal technologies as well. We're still on, only on placer mines. We've not got amalgamation just yet. Oh, damn raid in the middle. On the gold mine, hoping for the GG raid. But he's, he's not going to stay there. He's going to run past this. This is the only way he sold his uh, way back into the game. He's going for the GG raid. The skirmisher scouts it. Has it? Will he move? Can he move? Ulan's on vigils on the outpost. The, more, the main army is in soldiers' base, but I think Franz realized actually it's outside the base. But the Ulan's. They're on top of the Vils! There's two dops here! <laughs> why are there two dops there? I mean, I know why. It's, it's such a great play. That outpost is going down. There's Vils inside it. There's skirms everywhere. They're going to get doinked. And they're just dropping by. Oh my god. And the war, another war wagon batch. But the, the coin eco from Frontline has been protected by two dops. Soldiers has been cut in half. And that middle map still ready to go. Arsenal down. Looking for ranged cavalry. Caracol. The wood's coming in for that. That is what that wood's been saved up for. Yep, he's clicking it. I'm clicking it. He even bought just to get a bit of um, housing space as well. And he's just playing a very controlled game at this point. Really up in score. Soldier has to move to another coin mine. And it's kind of stunted his uh, unit production for the time being. Yeah. Yes, indeed. 14 war wagons here for Soldier. Unfortunately, Frontline has 18 war wagons with ranged cavalry, caracol, and cav combat behind. And what... If his army faces off each other, it's going to be brutal. Line of sight, though, from the train post. Would he see? Well, he must. He, he knows all his armies up here, but he's still going to go for the... Oh, the villager! Where are the villagers? Oh, they're the hunting! Oh. No amount of great cuts is going to save you versus all those scams, though, so we salute them. 
soldier has to get something done now. He's behind economically. 26 population to 41 population. It, he just has to do it. But the problem is... Frontline, he might also send Cal HP. No, I don't think he has. It's just not showing up as because it's population space, I think. Soldier, though, has Cav combat. Yeah, yeah, but no Cav. He hasn't got the arsenal down. Another batch of war wagons. I think 21 now for... 21 war wagons for Frontline. That is 63 population of war wagons. That's insane. It's nearly a full army uh, pop size fight for both players. Soldier trying for the uh, Ulan switch. Hasn't got a uh, ranged cavalry caracol. No, hasn't got cavalry carass. As we feels nearby. Notice actually how frontline basically has zero Ulans. Ulans charging in here for a soldier. We'll get a bit of connection. But there's enough. There's enough Ulans. Oh. They're age two. Frontlines forgot to upgrade his lands. They're still aged. Oh, they're, they're age three now. That works out quite nicely. Twelve war wagons remain for for a soldier. Frontline. He's got sixteen. I think he's got the skirm mass as well. This fight's actually a little bit closer than it probably would have been. But this mic. You see the micro on the skirms. They're whizzing through the war wagons. And Lancaster Square Lords. Just a more stuff principle from Zuta Zuta. Reign supreme. Gold, gold mine exposed. Skirm counts open. The game's come in. And the fourth victory there for Frontline takes the series 4 0 in actually a relatively quick series. Well played. GG's. And um, great to see. Soldier in chat. GG's wrecked. Wish I made it more exciting, boys. Don't worry, Soldier. We have our ups and downs. But uh, that last game was a good one. Um, yeah. I kind of understand. Right. Soldier, do you... Do you man, I don't know. Uh, we, we, I think we'll just leave it as that. Um, Frontline's a very good player. I, I think I think it, some people might have the wrong impression of Frontline. As in, like, people might think Frontline's an, an advanced level player. But he's, he's definitely professional level. Um, 2150 area, 2100, 2200. And Soldier's relatively recent back to the game. So, actually... Yeah, if soldiers to win the series, that would be well, it'd be the most amazing series of the uh, year, probably. It'd be, it'd be so back and forth, but it is what it is. This game, war wagon dot heavy into war wagon heavy, very interesting. Soldier had the great lead after frontline overcommitted into a town center with the the, the Minutemen Expo Pop. Kind of surprised he did that to start off with, because Minutemen is always available, always available. And he had no answer to that. But uh, good exchanges led him back into the position. And instead of the three top card, age two, but Soldier pivoted with. Frontline held on to that card and went early. Three war wagons and just had a little bit more tempo, which you can see for the rest of the game. And uh, the villager raids, yeah, I think the first raid was doable. The second raid, Soldier had to go all in that point, took the fight. And um, it, was, it wasn't. It was a better fight than it looked to start off with, but unfortunately, even if it was a double down. The economy just was not there for soldiers to remass. And that's the game there. GG's. GG's all. Oh, it's got very dark now. Let's turn on the light. And there we go. Apologies for not having the game sounds uh, early on. Um, I just, I've just loaded up this, this... This whole OBS thing is in a massive package. Which you can just uh, download load in straight away. But I didn't realise that the um, game screen had no desktop audio... Uh, input, so that's kind of disappointing, but oh well. Now I know. Next time, hey, he has some audio. <laughs> Victory for for frontline and a defeat there for soldier. <laughs> the um. Yeah, the China the China game was just felt bad. As, as soon as, as soon as card one being um, northern refugees over tea leaves, I could just see what was going to happen. I could just visualize the must cast timing, the siege of the villages, and just being up against it, and just know. And so it's one of those like, yeah, it, that matchup's a tough matchup, but it's also just I think the wrong strat there versus Brits as well. 
Lakota game one was just Lakota being Lakota. Lakota game two. In fact, the build was off a little bit. And um, maybe the deck was off a little bit as well. Really wanted, I really wanted soldiers to win game two. I think, I think that was that was the game that soldiers was gonna bounce off of. But they're just even goes to the last game when you're three 0 down in the German mirror. Like you have to mentally prep yourself to get back into the game. That's tough, very tough. <laughs> you can kind of see the cat. Yeah, the cat's down on the uh, on my shorts actually. So I guess I'm not wearing those tomorrow to work. Um, I really haven't got much else to say or. I think they're like there's Rex for the King of Osmond series, but I'm kind of hungover, so I don't, I, I don't want to do any more. I don't really have a cat cam. You can kind of see. Oh, it's, it's all cable behind. Ah, oh, fuck it. You, you've seen my cat before. If not, go to the start of the stream. I'll have a cat on my lap then. Right, boys. Um, well. Soldier stream? Question mark, Kappa? I mean... If Soldier was planning to play a three-hour series, he has got time for an hour stream after that. That's like, that's like on the uh, plus side. <laughs> Maybe. Right, I'm off. Good night, everybody.